Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and today LG just announced its latest flagship for fall 2018 with the new LG V40 ThinQ, and in this video we're going to get a quick first impressions on the device and see how it stacks up against the new iPhone XS Max. In terms of design, both phones follow the smartphone norms of 2018. They are both glass sandwiches. All glass front and all glass back with a stainless steel frame for the iPhone XS Max and an aluminum frame for the LG V40 ThinQ. Some noticeable differences between the two phones in terms of hardware will start at the bottom, where LG still includes a 3.5mm headphone jack to go with its internal Hi-Fi quad DAC, and of course to charge the phone there is a USB-C charging port that we hope Apple adopts into the iPhone one day. There's also a dedicated voice assistant button on the left hand side, which will integrate directly with Google Assistant. Now, unlike some other manufacturers like Samsung, for instance, who made their own personal assistant called Bixby, instead of using something like Amazon's Alexa, or in this case, the Google Assistant, LG went the easy and in my case, the most preferred route and partnered with Google and integrated its Google Assistant. Also, on the front of the phone, there are two cameras available. There's an 8 megapixel sensor and a 5 megapixel wide angle sensor, both which will help combine to create a new face unlock feature for the LG V40 that's pretty fast and accurate. It's still not as secure as what Apple has hidden inside of its notch, which is the True Depth camera system that allows for payment authentication with Face ID, but it's still a useful option for using your face to unlock your iPhone. Side note, the notch for each phone is obviously present, but the LG V40's notch is not as intrusive as the iPhone XS or XS Max. And there's also a setting to toggle the notch off, which essentially just puts a black bar to create a more traditional status bar. So for me personally, I don't really mind the notch. I'm quite used to it at this point in time, and it is what it is. So if you're someone who's not a fan, this is a good feature to have where you can just toggle that notch on or off. The back of the V40 is also drastically different to the iPhone XS Max. The XS Max has a dual camera system positioned in this vertical setup all the way to the left, while the V40 has three cameras positioned across the top horizontally. These cameras include two 12 megapixel cameras, a standard and telephoto lens, and a 16 megapixel wide angle sensor too. All three of these cameras can allow for some pretty awesome camera features that I look forward to checking out more in depth. Unfortunately, we've only had this device for roughly less than 24 hours, so we weren't able to test a whole lot out when it comes to the cameras, but if you let us know in the comment section down below, we can maybe do a deeper dive in a future video compared to the iPhone XS Max cameras to the LG V40. The three new camera features that are included on the V40 are triple shot, which allows you to tap the shutter button to create three photos of different angles at once, and then a video will then be created with the three photos together. There's also Cine Shot, which is the V40's way of creating a cinemagraph and allowing you to create a photo with only part of the scene in motion. Cine Shot will then add the part in motion to a static image. There's also a new slow motion option too, which can slow down all or parts of the video when recording. Of course, there's also a portrait mode available with an on-screen slider to adjust the background blur, just like you have it on the iPhone XS Max, and I was able to snap a quick portrait mode photo for a comparison, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below on which one you would prefer. Finally, the V40 has a fingerprint sensor located on the back right underneath those three cameras, which will most likely be your main authentication method when it comes to something like mobile payments. The display on the LG V40 is actually really nice. It's a big 6.4 inch QHD OLED display that's pretty bright and vibrant. It's very sharp and it's near edge to edge. Now any other Android device out there that has a notch usually has a pretty substantial chin at the bottom, but the V40 is actually not bad. I feel like it's pretty close to the iPhone XS Max's bottom bezel, but not fully there yet. Both displays look very good, and it's hard for me to say which one I'd prefer at this current moment, but in terms of form factor, I must say the LG V40 does feel really good in the hands. To me, this phone feels a lot lighter than the XS Max, which probably has something to do with the stainless steel versus aluminum, but the height and width are nearly identical. Both phones are definitely two-handed devices, and I'm not sure why I like the way the LG V40 feels in terms of form factor, but that's just where I'm leaning at this current moment. A couple of other things I noticed during my very brief time with the V40 is the speaker at the bottom can get pretty loud, but since it fires downward, it sounds a bit muffled. 
The sound does get better when placed on a solid surface or hollow box, as LG calls the boombox speaker will act like a woofer to amplify the bass even more. The iPhone XS Max has an additional speaker at the top of the phone, and this allows for a much better sound quality in my opinion, but both are pretty good when it comes to smartphone speakers. Both phones also have HDR10 support, and so if you want to watch HDR content on your device, you can absolutely do so, and these beautiful displays do a great job of showing off crisp HDR content. Overall, the LG V40 is light, fast, and packs a ton of camera and multimedia features that focuses heavily on content creation and consumption, and so far I really like what LG has done with this generation of the V series. So go ahead and let us know your thoughts on the V40 and how you think it compares to the iPhone XS and XS Max in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.